I really did a lot of reading before making this review as any informed piece on this film requires a sense of research and nuance rather than just addressing its qualities as it is. Meenakshi Sundareshwar since its first look came out has been embroiled in discussions over representation and the constant attempt by the Hindi film industry to do the bare minimum with respect to research in capturing the eccentricities of various communities. This is not a black and white argument but requires a sense of understanding of why people have been debating about the same. I'll definitely flesh out on both the pros and cons of exactly the same. The movie produced by Dharmatic Entertainment on Netflix focuses on an arranged marriage between Meenakshi played by Sanya Malhotra and Sundareshwar played by Abhimanyu Dasani. Fate or simply the decision of the patriarch of the family leads to the union of both individuals in marriage, specifically arranged marriage. While they are getting acquainted with each other's personalities, Sundar still seeking for a job, finally lands something substantial with a company in Bangalore. already compelling the couple to slum it out through a long distance relationship the complexities that follow in the couple's life that ranges from being compelled to follow the status quo and toxic nature of the new workforce the miscommunication and suffocation that one feels within the family and the dichotomy one has to deal with that ranges from fight or flight in a relationship forms the basic storyline of Meenakshi Sundareshwar here's me telling you the good and bad aspects of the film so that you guys can ultimately decide whether to watch it on Netflix or not the good the music the film has solidified in my mind that i'm not going to be jumping the gun and roasting the hindi film music scene for the sake of it this year at least because there has been some splendid music albums that have been produced we often jump the gun and me included to go to nostalgia mode and talk about the good old days where lyrics and music created this beautiful synergy but often ignore what is being produced in front of us from musical albums like shiddat and shersha minakshi sundareshwar is another addition to beautiful music being produced in 2021 the soundtrack that has been composed by justin prabhakaran and the lyrics written by raj shekhar are more or less the soul of this film The music has been beautifully captured almost guiding the storyline more than its dialogues. Man Kesar Kesar elegantly captures the traditional Tamil wedding in Madurai. Even to the shock of Tamil viewers, the level of detailing of both the house, the attire and the customs being followed actually seem like the creators made an effort to come very close to how it may happen in flesh. Tu Yahi Hai is one of my favorites as it showcases the couple facetiming one another, shedding light on the effort that it takes to make a long distance relationship work. Sundar always wanted to take his girlfriend around Madurai but Meenakshi does the same for him through FaceTime. I would highly recommend you listen to First Kiss by Justin Prabhakaran on YouTube and tell me whether it reminds you of the same vibe of Minnale when Madhavan sees Reema in the rain. It brought me flashbacks and has the ability to make you smile and your heart flutter. Production design and cinematography. This film is visually one of the most beautiful films I have seen. The frames, the color palette that each sequence represents and the production design really is something to marvel at. The cinematography by Debujit Ray captures the history and charm of Madurai with contrast of the skyscrapers in Bangalore with great detail. I was at one point of time just staring at the frames and the impeccable detail that exists. I mean just look at all of these moments from the film that actually come across as a painting as if each scene was hand drawn to how the director envisioned. I don't think anyone will fight about the fact that the movie is beautiful at least visually. The duo but Sanya Malhotra shines. Abhimanyu Dasani has a sincerity in his demeanor and delivery that really is infectious. I think we all became privy to his talent with Marco Dardnai Hota, but he lends a restraint and sensitivity to Sundar that can be frustrating at points but is unique to the character. His analytical processing of everything in his life and his socially inept nature almost zapped of his surroundings is communicated very well. It almost reminded me of Siddharth Malhotra's character from Bar Bar Dekho lacking any form of emotional intelligence. It is however Sanya Malhotra who is the show stealer in this film. I will get to representation after this, but she is a firecracker of a performer and I have been rooting for her since Dangal. She has a range that can convincingly play shy and coy and opinionated and fierce with such ease. There are so many moments from this film, from looking back at her house breaking down, knowing a new chapter is starting in her life to her almost suffocating at the very thought of family members doubting her intentions. She deserves so much more as a talent. Seeing her dance in a frenzy in the concluding moments of this film in a packed theater had my whole heart. She honestly has killed it when it comes to at least tapping into the emotional aspect of the character. Now let's get to brass tacks, the underwhelming aspects. Minimum effort in representation. As this film is an official OTT release, I'm going to be reviewing it based on what has been experienced by viewers and refreshingly so in the current landscape. What we have realized in these last 1.5 years 
is that content will speak volumes even if it is not in the Hindi language. To further enunciate that point, when these fictional shows that include individuals from a particular state from India, there is an effort made to authentically represent that community, especially through language. To see a Tamil family in Madurai speak in Shuddh Hindi within the confines of their house is already a red flag. I had previously spoken about the uncomfortable nature with which Bollywood represents Punjabis, speaking in primarily Hindi but adding nuances of Tenus and Mennus and Tussis, believing that it will convince viewers of a more accurate representation. Meenakshi Sundareshwar, for the most part, is sadly the North Indian perspective of what a Tamil family would sound like on their day-to-day -day functioning. And it's the most cookie-cutter and far-off idea you can think of. The Rajni Kant, Ayo, and Jigar Tanda stereotype is in full glory. Many of the dialogues sounded like how I butcher Tamil names while reviewing films, and that is simply not good enough while portraying a fictional story of a particular community. You have a film like Sherni, where behind closed doors, Vidya Balan speaks to her mother in fluent Malayalam. See, we have even projects like Family Man, where the cast comprises of Tamil speaking individuals who pragmatically speak to each other in their native tongue and transition to speak in either English or broken. In Hindi to communicate with someone else. In retrospect, if you think about it, an acting duo like Kadar and Anandi would have made more sense and people would have still tuned in. That would have been probably more representative of the community portrayed. I don't want to discount what Abhimanyu and Sanya have convincingly done in their parts, but there is merit to the argument that this era requires better representation, especially of communities that are distinct in language and culture. Let me know what you feel about the same in the comments below. Subplots making you snooze. Getting to the storyline perspective of Meenakshi Sundareshwar, I genuinely feel that this was a beautiful love story with a lot of potential that somehow got lost in its own sauce by the second half of the film. There was this awkward sweetness between both the characters that could have been capitalized to focus more on the complex hurdles one faces while being in a relationship, especially through an arranged marriage. But the film with a snail-like pace starts to focus on subplots in an extremely half-assed manner, not really being there or here if you know what I mean. You've got everything from an eccentric and toxic boss in the workplace, Sundar's gullible nature of accepting everything by face value in Bangalore, a contest that is attempting to showcase the competition in a metropolitan city but barely scratches the surface, and a reunion with an old friend that culminates to mostly nothing. It is in the silences and the moments shared between Sundar and Minakshi that drew you in, but the film tends to focus in the minutia around them that really doesn't make us understand their psychological and emotional ups and downs. Disperse Focus The film wants to provide a commentary on unions made through a setup like arranged marriages and the hurdles one has to face over that being a long-distance relationship. Through its characters, it showcases the role of the dice, essentially the setup maybe, throwing at you googlies you least expected of the personality you might have to spend the rest of your life with. But through the lives of Minakshi and Sundar, the solution of a rather complex relationship is easily resolved. Its takeaway is not as convincing as it should have been. The intention of individuals fighting for one another and persevering. That longing for the couple to work things out was missing and its odd tangents and dispersed focus dampened its overall impact. It breaks my heart to say this, but if this film was set in Delhi and Sanya's character was an SRK fan, I probably wouldn't be as analytical in my review, nor would be other viewers. Minakshi Sundareshwar is only worth it for its visuals, music, and a beautiful performance by Sanya Malhotra. It's feel-good stuff, but the lack of representation with the cast and language is baffling and jarring to be ignored. Not to forget, its nail-like pace and unnecessary attention to subplots reduces its overall impact of what could have been a romance for the ages. And that was the video, guys. Write down in the comments below what you thought about the movie. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram. The handle's right in front of you. Follow me at jammypants4. Also, please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead. Thank you for watching.